Okay, so let's look at mass deficit now in a fission reaction. Now, something amazing happens in terms of the binding energy. If you remember the binding energy, we can think of as these bits of energy stuck around the outside to hold this nuclei together. And the binding energy is the amount of energy required per nucleon to do that. Okay, now what we found so far is when we started off, if you remember, with something simple like hydrogen, each nucleon had loads of binding energy all the way around it. Okay, it's analogous to, sip to, um, to, to surface area. And as we got bigger and bigger, the total amount of surface area per the average surface area per nucleon, the average binding energy per nucleon, decreased. So we saw mass deficit. So iron, which has 56 nucleons, weighs less than, has got a smaller mass than 56 um, hydrogen atoms. Okay, we, we, we'd expect it to have a greater mass than it does. So we get a mass deficit going this way. At iron, at this, amazing, this magic number of 56, something special happens. As we make this bigger, so as we try and fuse this together now and to make larger elements, larger nuclei like this, we found that we suddenly start requiring more energy. There's energy going all over the surface area, the average surface area of this shape, even inside. Okay, and this is all to do with um, increases. This is all to do with an inability of the strong force to control things as well as it was. The strong force, remember before, was holding it all together really, really well. Now it can't, because it's got so large, the strong force can only operate really over this kind of area. Now, if the strong force can only operate over this kind of area here, this dotted circle in the middle, okay, then these ones are on the outside are no longer stuck in a, in a, a great, pure, spherical shape. They're able to kind of push themselves round and get all over the place, and there's gaps suddenly appearing, which means surface area starts to rocket up, and the amount of energy required to hold this together starts to increase. So now what we find is the average binding energy here, the average binding energy here is much greater than here. So this has got a mass of 236, okay? But the average mass of this, so if I find the total mass of this and divide it by 236, it would actually weigh more, it would have greater mass than if I divided this by 56. Okay, so what we find is the average mass, or the amount of mass and energy per nucleon in here, has shot up. Okay, and because of that, when I turn this, get rid of the, this for a moment, when I turn iron into uranium, however many there might be, what I find is actually I need to add some mass to do that. And of course, this mass here, I can just use E equals mc squared okay, to work out how much energy that's equivalent to. And because of that, there's no way, if a star, such as a red star or a supernova, a red giant or a supernova, as soon as they start to convert iron into things that are bigger, they have to lose mass, they have to lose energy. The only way for this to, be, to get energy out of this system is to turn that arrow around because now, if I break up a uranium, I end up getting some iron and ions or other smaller elements and this mass deficit, which is equal to the binding energy, if you remember. Uh, mass deficit goes this way. Uh, so this gets lighter, which means this requires more energy per nucleon. This is, the, bind this is the, the binding energy here. More energy per nucleon to hold it together. Okay? Hope that helps.